Hello, I'm going to be recording uh, the adrenals, uh, the fast fact sheets to give you just a little bit more information that will hopefully help you on the exam because I know there's a lot we're covering and this is quite a bit of material. So without further ado, we'll get started. If you'll pull up your um, fast fact sheet on the adrenal glands, it will tell you your readings there's going to be in your med surge book. Uh, page 1273 through 83, and then your Pete's book, 988 through 992. So when we think about the adrenal glands, first of all, where in the world are they located? Well, the adrenal glands are called suprarenal glands, supra meaning on top of, so they are attached to the upper portion of the kidneys. And one thing we do know about the adrenal glands are that they are very highly vascular, and that they have two layers. The outer layer is known as the adrenal cortex and it makes up particularly about 90% with the inner layer being the adrenal medulla that only makes up about 10%. Now when we look at the pituitary gland it is quite um, unusual. I'm going to increase this here a little bit because look what's happening. We have the pituitary gland up here. The pituitary gland secretes, we know, ACTH. ACTH is a hormone that goes to the adrenal glands and helps it release the three S's, is what I like to call them, the sugar, the salt, and the sex. In this case, the aldosterone, the cortisol, and the sex hormones. So we have the pituitary gland that has to be intact, that secretes ACTH, that goes to the adrenal gland, and then therefore the adrenal gland secretes aldosterone, cortisol, and sex hormone. Now if you're just looking at this diagram that I give you here, look at what's going on. I have connected to the sex hormones also the gonads. So in other words, they have a backup system. So if something was to happen to the pituitary gland and ACTH was not secreted to the adrenal gland, the sex hormones have a backup gland, the gonads, that would help, the, help secrete the sex hormones in your body. Same thing over here with aldosterone. If something happens to the adrenal glands, there's a backup plan called angiotensin II. Now, look at cortisol. There is no backup plan. If something happens to the pituitary gland and ACTH is not secreted uh, down to the adrenal glands, then cortisol does not get secreted at all. It has no backup plan. Okay? So, what that means then, there's a difference in primary and secondary aldosteronism. In primary, Addison's, which is called Addison's, and the way that I remember this one is with Addison's, I need to add some. I need to add some. So, in primary Addison's, the primary organ, which is the adrenal gland, is always your primary organ, is the organ you're talking about, is dysfunctional. So it's not going to respond to ACTH. So the pituitary gland secretes ACTH. It goes down here to the adrenal gland, but the adrenal gland does nothing. So the adrenal gland is messed up in primary Addison's. Okay. Therefore, no cortisol is going to be produced. But these other two hormones, your aldosterone and your sex hormones, have backup systems. So their levels may be slightly decreased and even normal depending upon the backup system. Now, ACTH then is going to be high because it knows that cortisol levels are what? Low. So what's it keep doing? It keeps tormenting and tormenting the adrenal gland saying do something, do something. Cortisol levels are low, do something. Okay. So remember, if ACTH, I told you this earlier, if ACTH goes up, MSH goes up. And remember I said MSH involves pigmentation. MSH involves pigmentation. So they're the buddy system, ACT, ACTH and MSH. Well, if it's responsible for pigmentation and ACTH levels go up, then I'm going to have bronze colored skin. Now, if you have secondary Addison's disease, the secondary organ, which is your pituitary gland, that's your secondary organ, becomes dysfunctional. So what's going to happen here is it's not going to put out ACTH. So ACTH levels will be low with this one 
MSH levels will also be low since, again, they're good buddy systems. And if this ACTH does not stimulate the adrenal glands, again, no cortisol is going to be produced. But the other two, aldosterone and sex hormones, have backup systems. So again, they're going to be slightly decreased or normal. So my question to you is, how do you tell the difference between primary and secondary Addison's? And the way that you tell the difference between primary and secondary is looking at the ACTH level. That's what you got to look at, and that will tell you the difference, okay? In primary, the ACTH level is going to be high, right? Because in primary, something's wrong with the adrenal glands. It's not secreting. Uh, so, therefore, ACTH keeps hammering it, saying, do something, do something. In secondary, the pituitary gland is messed up, so there's no ACTH coming out. Therefore, ACTH levels would be low, and MSH levels would be low. So the difference between primary and secondary is the ACTH levels. All right, I called the adrenal cortex releasing the three S's, the salt, the sugar, and the sex, the salt being the mineral corticoids, aldosterone, and we know it targets the kidneys, and its purpose is to regulate sodium retention and, recre and recreation on uh, the renal tubules. So in other words, it regulates extracellular fluid volume and blood pressure. Very, very important then, right? Sugar, the glucocorticoids, mainly cortisol, the target is every body tissue. And the purpose is to promote metabolism, your defenses against stress, suppress inflammatory reactions. Your sex hormone, your androgens, which would be your estrogen and progesterone, target the ovaries and the testes. And the purpose is the development of bones, reproductive organs, and secondary sex characteristics. So, if you have any questions about primary and secondary, give me a holler. I said the adrenal medulla only made up 10%, and mainly it consists of what's called the catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Epinephrine makes up 85 to 90%. Its target cells is the beta receptor, so therefore it's going to increase heart rate, cardiac output, blood pressure, vasoconstriction. Norepinephrine are fight or flight. It only makes up 10 to 15 percent of the catecholamines, and its target is alpha receptors. So it decreases blood flow to tissues that are not needed in an emergency and increases them to ones that are needed. So critical thinking question. An absence or decreased secretion by the medulla is not life-threatening. Why would you think it wouldn't be life-threatening in the medulla? Because they're also secreted by the sympathetic nervous system, epi and norepinephrine. So in other words, there's other areas, backup systems, uh, that will increase in life-threatening situations. So because it has a backup system, it's also secreted by the sympathetic nervous system as well as the adrenal medulla. Uh, it will not uh, be life-threatening. So, if someone go, if something goes wrong with ACTH from the pituitary gland, what hormone would be primarily affected? And you should have said cortisol. Back to this one, right? If something's affected with ACTH secretion and it's not having the adrenal gland secrete, who's in trouble? Backup system, angiotensin II. Backup system, gonads, no backup system, cortisol's in trouble if something goes wrong with ACTH secretions. All right, the adrenal cortex can have hypo and hyper secretions of cortisol. That's our main one because the other two have backup systems. So if we have hypo function of the adrenal cortex, it results in a condition known as Addison. Addison, hypo function, I need to add some. That's how I remember that. I need to add some. Hyperfunction of the adrenal cortex of cortisol results in cushions. Cushions because you get fluffy like a big cushion. Okay. So hint, Addison's, I need to add some cushions. I got too much extra cushion going on. So there's two types of Addison's. We've already talked about primary and secondary, with primary being the most common. Primary means something's wrong with the primary organ, which would be the adrenal gland. Primary problems with the adrenal gland itself and secondary is problems with the pituitary or other causes related to decreased ACTH production. 
So consider, will the following hormones be up or down in primary versus secondary aldosteronism? Alrighty. Sorry, I got off my pages here. All right, so let's go to both of these. The glucocorticoids, the glucocorticoids. It doesn't matter if it's primary or secondary. Think back to what we talked about earlier. They're going to be what? Decrease. This is cortisol. Because why? There is no backup system regardless if it's a primary cause, something's wrong with the adrenals, or a secondary cause, something's wrong with the pituitary. So decreased, decreased. The mineral corticoids. The mineral corticoids are either going to be slightly decreased or normal. Slightly decreased or normal, right? Because they have a backup system, aldosterone. Your sex hormones. Your sex hormones are going to be slightly decreased or normal, slightly decreased or normal. Why? They have a backup system. So at this point, between primary and secondary, you do not have any differences in the actual uh, hormone levels. But when you get to ACTH and MSH, which go the same direction, that's how you tell the difference. Remember, the ACTH and the MSH will be increased with primary, and they'll both be decreased with secondary. And I explained the reasons why for that earlier. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. So let's talk about Addison's, and it's mainly the primary is the main one, so that's the one I want you to concentrate on. You remember, you need to add some. So you need to add some cortisol. So you need to add some pep in your step is the way I look at it. You need to add some pep to your step. So how are we going to add some pep to our step? By fixing these signs and symptoms. The cardinal complaint is weakness. They'll be very complaining of fatigue, weight loss, decrease alertness, confusion, dizziness, syncope episodes. They'll have a craving for salt. And they may or may, it may just be a little one depending upon the mineral corticoids and if they're slightly decreased. Nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, dry skin, increased skin pigmentation. Remember, that's because of why. Increase MSH. If ACTH goes up, MSH goes up. So that's where you get into that bronze colored skin. And there's a good photo of that in your book. Uh, hypotension, tachycardia, hyperthermia decreased resistance to stress, and slight decrease in sex hormones and may be normal, depending. And you will see these same signs and symptoms in the child that you do in the adult, uh, regardless if it's Addison's or Cushion's. So why are they having the weakness, the fatigue, and the weight loss? What's causing those signs and symptoms? Well, most of the time, if you think about one of the functions of cortisol, it's to promote metabolism. So if you've got a decreased cortisol, your metabolism's down. So you'll have decreased protein, decreased carb, decreased fat metabolism, and that's going to result in some of these things occurring. Uh, pigmentation, again, because of the increased MSH. So here's a photo of primary uh, Addison's to help you along the way. You can see here the bronze-colored skin, changes in hair distributions, hypoglycemia, because cortisol is a what? Cortisol is a counter-regulatory hormone, and it's decreased. Hypotension, weight loss, GI disturbances, and weakness. And they can get into what's called an Addisonian increase, uh, crisis, and that's where all these things intensify. So diagnostic findings, uh, hyponatremia, and you're going to have to know these for the test. Hyperkalemia, the one good thing about it is if you get it down pat, cushions is the opposite hypoglycemia, they will have what's called a decreased 24-hour urine of 17 ketosteroids. And that is because those are the metabolites of glucocorticoids and those are down. So that would be decreased over a 24-hour time. They're going to have low to no serum cortisol levels depending upon how uh, bad the ACTH is. Low ACTH if secondary, high if uh, primary. And they're going to do CAT scans and MRI uh, scannings. Now, what they're going to do is go in and do a test for this. And they're going to do, in this case, you've got a hypofunction. 
And anytime you have a hypofunction, you do a stimulation test. So they're going to do a stimulation test with ACTH. Now, levels will not rise during the test depending upon what's wrong if you do the stimulation test. So, because it's not that something's wrong with the ACTH in this case, something's wrong with the adrenal glands themselves. Okay. Uh, management is decrease your stress. Uh, let me go back to the stimulation test and just talk to you a little bit more about that. And uh, what they're going to do is go in and your book talks about this and do an ACTH stimulation test. And a rapid ACTH stimulation test can be performed on an outpatient basis. And they're going to give ACTH 0 0.25 to 1 milligram IV. And then plasma cortisol levels are going to be tamed at 30 minutes and 1 hour intervals. In primary, the cortisol response is still absent, right? Because it doesn't matter how much ACTH I give, it's not going to help. Uh, or it's going to be decreased markedly. In secondary, though, uh, it is going to be increased, okay? So teaching, our management is to decrease stress, IV therapy, replace fluids, and the, uh, replace fluids, replacement therapy, and this will be lifelong. Uh, they're going to be getting some type of cortisol. If they, you need to add some, then they've got to have it forever. Uh, hydrocortisone, solucortev, it could be cortisone, uh, methylprethazone, mexoprethazone, dexarone. And the problem with it, or not the problem, they do have a problem in that they cause other problems. Uh, we also know, we all know if you get too much of uh, cortisol, uh, then you have problems with blood sugars, you have problems healing, there's some other problems that can occur because of that. Uh, if it's low on the uh, aldosterone, which most of the time members it's just going to be slightly decreased, then they may have to give what's called fluoronef. And fluoronef is uh, aldosterone replacement. But again, sometimes it is not decreased. It's normal because of its backup system. Now the pattern here, if you're looking, is if it ends in one, it's been mostly a steroid or cortisol. So you want to think for boards, if you see a drug that ends in one, steroid. So during stressful times, patients need to know, increase your cortisol to live. So if they are going through a very stressful time, they may have to take a double dose of their cortisol. Because during times of stress, you need increased cortisol. It's always better to give it in doubt than not to give it. Because low levels lead to death, and high levels only lead to cushions. So what would you rather have? Nursing considerations, you're going to monitor hydration status, oral and liberal fluid intake of salt, particularly if they are low on the mineral corticoids. Teaching stress management, they need to wear medical alert bracelets. They need to teach about medications and carrying cortisol with them at all times and avoiding infection. Uh, they need to watch for signs and symptoms of what's called an Addisonian crisis because that can lead to vascular collapse if not treated. Management of an Addisonian crisis, you got to treat the cause, and the three main goals are going to be reverse shock, restore blood circulation, and replenish the body with essential steroids. This crisis will pass very quickly, usually within 24 hours, once you add some adequate cortisol. All right, so just the opposite of this is cushions known as hypersecretion of cortisol. It's very rare in children, mainly you will only be seeing this in the adult. Uh, the causes is mostly iatrogenic, uh, too much cortisol. Uh, it could be caused from primary, which is the uh, mainly a tumor usually, um, of the adrenal gland, or secondary, something's wrong with the pituitary. Um, and usually it's a tumor. Manifestations, you take the normal functions of the three uh, S's that I talked about earlier, your sugar, salt, and sex, and you just exaggerate all of those, okay? There is a table in your book. So with cushions, instead of weight loss, you're going to see weight gain. And where's that weight gain going to be? Well, it's going to be altered fat distributions, in that you may see uh, what's called the moon face, the buffalo hump, and thin extremities. Again, your book has a very good picture of these, and you need to know these. 
protein tissue wasting or weakness, and log, uh, mass and bruising, loss of skeletal calcium, frequent infections, mood swings, uh, they may have blindness if it's a pituitary tumor putting pressure, they may have increased hair growth and masculine features, uh, hypertension, edemia, CHF, uh, again easy bruising uh, from the lack of uh, collagen support of your blood vessels, Pale purplish striae uh, from the thinning of the skin is very common. And something I don't have on here is hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia. Okay. Uh, diagnostic findings you're going to see is just the opposite of Addison's. So if you get one of these, you can get the others of these. Now you're going to see hypokalemia, hyperglycemia, hypernatremia elevated 24 urine 17 ketosteroids and a high serum cortisol just the opposite now instead of doing a stimulation test I would do a suppression test and I would do this overnight with dexamethasone suppression test uh, remember cortisol follows a perennial pattern pattern rising in early morning falling in the evening and we know that stress affects that as well uh, so you would always want to uh, give the medication and check the levels and see if it is suppressing. And if it fails to suppress, then we know uh, then it's positive. Management, if it's a pituitary tumor, surgery or radiation. If it's an adrenal tumor, they'll do surgery, then replacement therapy. Uh, pharmacological treatment can suppress or block the synthesis of cortisol or ACTH. They'll do adrenalectomy and they're going to need pre and post-op teaching. Uh, in the pre-op period, they're going to need supportive care, correction of fluid and electrolyte imbalances, decreasing the stressors as much as possible. Now, if it's a child, make sure that you're doing appropriate communication techniques according to their age. With the post-op period, uh, medications, and they're going to need cortisol for life. There is no skipping it. Skipping doses can cause adrenal crisis and death. Uh, they're going to be in ICU when they get out. I know, daily weights. You're going to be monitoring their labs very carefully, controlling their pain, turning coughing and deep breathing, and decreasing stressors as much as possible. So if it's a partial removal, then replacement is temporary until the body starts responding and you can taper off. If it's a total, replacement is lifelong. Critical thinking. What type of diet would you serve a patient with Addison's? What type of diet would you serve a patient with Addison's? We'll go back and look at what I said about the lab findings. Decreased glucose, so you would give them some carbs. Hyponatremia, so they would need salt. Hyperkalemia, so they need low potassium. Weight loss, so they need high carbs and high uh, protein. If you think about what type of diet would you serve a patient with cushions, go back and look at the lab. Hypokalemia, so increased potassium. Hyperglycemia, so decreased bad carbs. Hypernatremia, so decrease your sodium. Just the opposite. But you do need to know these. If I were to say a patient is admitted with Addison's, what's the best dietary choice? Well, go buy their labs. So this is a particular picture of cushions, and there's also one in your book that's very good. Uh, in case you people that like um, visuals. All right, so that is Cushions and Addison's. Uh, Addison's, I need to add some cortisol. Uh, cushions, I got too much on my big cushion. CAH, or congenital adrenal hyperplasia, is an autosomal recessive disorder, and this is on page, Pete's book, page 990. You will not see this very often. It's common in males and females and only occurs in about 1 in 14,000 births. So you will not see it at all, hardly. Um, now, uh, it is an inborn deficiency of one of the enzymes that's needed to synthesize cortisol. Uh-oh, I see another problem coming then. And aldosterone. Uh-oh. As a result, there's an increased secretion of ACTH by the pituitary. Doesn't that make sense? If cortisol and aldosterone levels are down, then ACTH is going to start hammering the adrenal gland to say, put out more, put out, put out more. Now, it doesn't say anything in here, though, about the what? It talks about the sugar and the salt, but not the sex hormones. So what's happening when ACTH keeps hammering that 
adrenal gland is the sex hormones keep, go into overdrive. Uh, cortisol and aldosterone are lacking, so ATH level goes up and they remain low, but nothing's wrong with the sex hormones, so they get to put into overtime. This increase in adult and androgen causes ambiguous genitalia in the females and precocious genitalia in males. So it's going to be more pronounced in girls. In the females, you're going to have an enlarged clitoris, fusion of the labia, and a closed vaginal orifice, so it almost looks like they have a penis. In the males, they're going to have genital enlargement, frequent erections, and early secondary characteristics. Now this is, they have difficulty assigning sex to the newborn and particularly the female. So ultrasounds are done to review the internal organs and a karyotype for positive sex discrimination is done. Uh, it is an awkward situation, you know, is this a boy, is this a girl? So it's best just to say you have a beautiful infant at this time. Sometimes they'll pick neutral names until they know. Uh, again, if, the, if it's the males, we don't tend to worry about that as much because usually you just got fathers, you know, sometimes thinking, woo, way to go, son, instead of it's a problem. Uh, males are usually not diagnosed at birth uh, when they present with the signs even. Uh, finding the right words, I just talked about. Management, they're going to confirm the diagnosis, assign a sex to the newborn. Uh, then reconstructive surgery and lifelong replacement doses of the deficient hormones. Once they uh, fix the cortisol and the aldosterone deficiency, then that will take care of the sex hormone because ACTH will help stop hammering the adrenal gland to uh, secrete more. All right, if it's a female, again, extensive reconstructive surgery is usually successful. Uh, the labia will be separated to create a vaginal orifice and then vaginal dilatations will occur over years. Uh, most agree that surgery should be before the child's old enough to realize something's wrong, usually by one year of age. You do have some that say it's better to wait till adolescence, then they can participate in the decisions of what they want to be because sometimes they've been raised in different sex during that time. All right, disorders of the adrenal medulla are very rare, but death without intervention can occur because of the extreme in increased blood pressure. This results in a condition known as pheochromocytoma, and this is the most common, and it's a neoplasm that produces excessive catecholamines. Um, tumors, 90% are benign, 10% are malignant that cause this. Uh, it can occur at any age, but the peak age is usually 40 to 60. And again, we don't hardly ever see this in children, only adults. Now, this tumor can be a gland or it can be in the pelvis. It can be in the abdomen. It can be in the thorax. It can be located lots of different places. You're going to see hypertension in the classic triad, severe pounding headache, tachycardia, and profuse sweating. So why would you monitor uh, blood sugar levels? Remember, this is a counter-regulatory hormone, epinephrine, norepinephrine, your catecholamines. So it can make the level go very high. Now, in adults, blood pressure has been recorded as high as 350 over 200. In children, the systolic is known to be as high as 250, even though you don't see this very often. The pressure is usually so high because of the stimulation of those alpha and beta receptors. Now the episodes can be daily, they can be monthly, they can last minutes to hours because the release of catecholamines is not continuous so it doesn't stay up all the time. Uh, as far as the diagnostic, um, you're going to do an HMP. Uh, increased plasma and urine levels are going to be present. VM, v MA and metapenes are the measure of metabolites of epinephrine, norepinephrine in the urine, and they're going to be high. CT and MRI scanning is done to locate the tumor. Now with this one, you have too much of it, so you're going to do a suppression test. Usually, uh, catapress in the present of it will suppress the release of catecholamines, but in this case, it would not. Management, if a mass is present, do not palpate. Do not palpate. Uh, begin, these are adrenergic blockers, uh, and it, or you start palpating and you burst that tumor, then all those catecholamines can increase. 
Treatment is surgical removal of the tumor. Avoid stimulants. Avoid stimulants, particularly in the diet. Avoid tyramine, cheeses, wines. But they don't need anything that stimulates. No coffee, no uh, ca uh, caffeine, teas. Medication. Uh, they're going to give them uh, DEMSER, denser. Uh, and this medication is an enzyme inhibitor. Uh, that inhibits the initial step in synthesis of catecholamine. So that's going to reduce it by 80% reduction on norm, uh, normally. This is one of the few conditions where seriously high blood pressure can actually be controlled by a simple surgery and removal of a tumor. Pre and post-op teaching. Pre-op, you're going to give medications to correct the hypo, uh, hypervolemia and uh, any kind of cause. Uh, cardiovascular complications that occur to get them stable. Alpha adrenergic blockers are given to prevent a hypertensive crisis during surgery about 15 days prior uh, because once they remove uh, that tumor some of those catecholamines can escape and make the pressure uh, high postoperatively. So you want to monitor blood pressure carefully postoperatively. Again blood sugar levels because if they affect that they're a counter regulatory hormone. Replacement therapy is needed I, unfortunately, you have to also teach them that it can reoccur. So follow up and making sure they're always checking their blood pressure uh, would be uh, needed. They can usually resume normal activity within a week. If you have any questions or concerns about this content, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you very much. Have a great day.